How's it going everybody? In this video, I'm gonna show you how we set up running water in our off-grid cabin. I'll show you how we get our water, um, everything. Our entire system is very straightforward, very easy to follow. I did a video on the entire hookup of it as I was setting it up, but watching it back, it was really boring. It'll just be easier to just show you it now that it's done. I mean, it's really straightforward. Anybody can do it, uh, regardless of what your uh, level of experience is with plumbing or any of that. So um, yeah, this is a very simple running water system for a cabin. RV, your van, fish house, whatever. Um, it doesn't get any more simple or straightforward than this. So I'll show you it. So we get our water from the rain. Um, during the summer months, we collect rainwater. During the winter, we melt snow. It doesn't get any more simple or cheap than that. So that's how we do it. This is our rain barrel setup. I just did this the other day. Um, I put a little nozzle in here. So obviously, you know, the rainwater comes off our roof, thro flows through our gutters, gets dumped into this holding tank, basically. So. You know, I can crank this open, have water flow out of here. To fill up our garden, we just fill up a little uh, watering can, go over and, you know, water our garden. But I also have this set up right here. This is a 12 volt transfer pump. And I hook this hose to this nozzle, open it up, and then this hose goes into our holding tank inside, which I will show you now. So this is the hose that's hooked to that transfer pump. Um, that transfer pump hooks to a 12 volt battery, my old car battery, and then I just pump the water from that rain barrel outside into this holding tank in our mechanical room, which is also a 55 gallon barrel. These are, like I said, you can find these for next to nothing. Um, usually you can find them for free if you look hard enough, and they make awesome holding tanks. So this is what I used for my water lines. Just RV and marine garden hose, half inch. You know, garden hose isn't really the correct way to do it, um, but it was actually cheaper than buying uh, tubing at my local hardware store. The correct way to do it would be to use PEX, you know, something like that. Um, the thing with my situation is all of my connections are going to be exposed. You know, they won't be sheeted in or buried inside of a wall. So it would be very obvious um, if, you know, if there was a water leak of any sort. Um, but this has been set up for about a week now. I have zero leaks. Um, everything's working very smoothly. So this worked out quite well for me. So that's what I use for my water line. And again, I'm not recommending that you do it that way. It's just how I did it, but um, it has worked for me and I don't have any leaks. So, um, and then with those garden hoses, anywhere you have a connection, I use these, just these simple little connectors. They're half inch connectors, have half inch threads on one end, and then a little insert that you can insert into your garden hose. So from our holding tank, we have this hose, which goes down to our pump, of course. This pump is a flow jet. They're made for uh, RVs. There's the model number if you want to get the same one. And anytime I spend any amount of money on something, I, re I really do a lot of research. And there's several different brands of these. There are cheaper ones. This one ran runs about a hundred bucks. Um, it's up to you if you want to get a cheaper one or not. Flow jet seemed to be the most popular, had the best reviews, and supposedly has pretty good customer service. So I went with them. To run a pump, you have to have power, of course. These are 12 volt pumps, so it, this is just hooked to my old car battery. Um, these wires come with it. And then I bought these alligator clamps. There's just a screw that you hook the wire to and now I can clamp this on. That way I can take these alligator clamps off and move this battery around if I need to. You also want to install a switch with these pumps. So this is just a, a toggle switch that I got from the auto section in my local hardware store. Super cheap, it was like two bucks for that. Um, very easy to install, you can't, you can't really mess it up. With your pump, they give you this strainer, which you wanna install. Uh, this just collects any sort of debris that might be in your holding tank, you know, from your water source. That way you don't get debris inside your pump and risk damaging your pump. So obviously this side goes to my holding tank. This side, I have a T. The reason I have this T is this line goes to my the cold side on my kitchen faucet. That way we can have a cold water option. And then it continues on up to our water heater. Our water heater is a Camp Lux. Uh, again, there's knockoff brands of this as well. Um, get whatever one you want. This seems to be the most popular, good reviews, um, and they're really reliable and straightforward. So that's what I went with. I got the one that has a flue on top. They have some that don't have this flue. If you're gonna use this inside, you wanna vent this. Right now I don't have it vented. I'm gonna vent it as soon as possible, as soon as I go to the store and buy materials and I'll just, you know, run a 90 outside. That way this is vented. 
The ones that don't have this flue, if you're going to use it inside, you'll have to, you know, buy a duct to put on top and then figure out how to fit a pipe to that and vent it. Um, to have, to get this style that has the flu on it, it's about an extra $20, which was way worth it to me just to have this done, done for me. That way I can just hook my pipe on and vent this very easy. So how this water heater works, okay? This is my intake line from my holding tank. So we just have this T that goes over to the kitchen faucet just on the cold side, and then it goes right up into this water heater. So from my hot water side, which is this one, and these are labeled on the water heater so you can't mess it up. You have a water inlet, which is your cold water, and a water outlet, which is going to be the hot water coming out of the water heater, of course. This hose comes down, and I have a T on this one as well. The reason I have the T is this goes to the hot water side on my kitchen faucet. The other side goes to my shower head. So to our shower, I only ran one line and that's a hot water line. I didn't run a cold line to it because we're not going to take cold showers in here. Anytime we take a, a shower in here, we're going to want a hot shower. If I want to take a cold shower, I can do that outside with just a gravity system I have. Um, so anytime we shower in here, it's going to be hot water. So why bother running a cold line to it? So that is literally it for this system. Very simple, very straightforward. Coming out of my pump, I have a T. That way we can have cold water to our, the cold side on our kitchen faucet. That's the only place that we have cold water in here. This goes up to the water heater, heats it up, comes out our hot water side, which I have a T on as well. One side of that T goes to our shower head. The other side goes to the hot side on our kitchen faucet. This Camp Lux water heater runs off of propane. So right now I just have this propane tank inside, I am going to run this underneath the cabin, but right now I just have this in here just to show you how this works. And I still have some cleaning up to do, you know, strapping. This is just a rat's nest right now. I'm not going to leave it like this at all. I just have it hooked up, wanted to make sure it worked before I started doing my strapping. The, the way that this ignites is with two D batteries. So this does not need to be plugged into any power source whatsoever. It just takes two D batteries. When water gets pumped through this it senses that kicks on the water heater and you'll have hot water um, anywhere that you need to have hot water so it's very nice very slick that you don't have to have it plugged in just takes batteries that's perfect for an off-grid application okay so i'll go and show you our shower so this is the shower head for right now this shower head comes with that water heater i had to use this one instead of our old one because there was no way for me to shut off the way that we had our old setup set up. So it just we as soon as the pump was on, it just we just would have had water dumping out of the shower head continuously. This one has an on-off switch on it. See it so it's on demand. That's why I had to use this one. Otherwise, if I used my old one, it just would have been water coming out. I had no way to shut it off. I am gonna install just a little valve down here and use our old shower head. Um, just the on-off is all we need right here, but I, I, I just have this set up right now because, like I said, otherwise we would just have water dumping out of here. So this allows me to be able to shut it off. And this thing is, you know, retractable, so you can, you know, pull it out and, you know, hose off if you need to. We're only going to have this set up like this for about a day or two, so that's kind of why it looks pretty janky. So right now I am underneath our kitchen sink, just to show you. So remember that T coming from the hot water side? That goes to the hot water side on my faucet. The cold water side that had that T goes to the cold water side on the faucet. So it's very simple. This black hose comes with the kitchen faucet. That's for that little spray nozzle, which I'll show you. So that little black hose just goes to your little sprayer here, which just connects into your faucet and that comes with it. Okay, so I'll show you how slick this is. It's, it's on-demand water. So you can hear the pump kick on. There's our cold water side. Now we'll turn the hot water side on. And again, when I turn this on, that's going to kick on the tankless water heater. So I'll turn this on right now. And it's hot. So I'll go set this camera up in our mechanical room and I'll point it at the water heater. That way you can see how that works when I turn on the hot water side on our kitchen faucet. Okay, I'll run flip it on, you'll hear the pump uh, go on. The camera's right over the pump, so it's probably going to be noisy, but you'll see this ignite. So 
So you can see these blue flames, that's what's heating the water. And then you have a digital screen showing you what your water temperature is coming out. Okay, that was actually really hot. I went over and put my hand in underneath the faucet and it like burned me. So I'm gonna crank that down a little bit. So you have these two knobs on the water heater. This one is your, how hot the water is gonna come out, which mine was at like three quarters. That's way too hot. So I'm gonna turn that down to like a quarter because it was that hot. And then this other one is your flow rate. So whatever, you know, whatever you want your water pressure to be at, I'll just put it halfway because I'm pretty happy with the pressure. So there you have it. I mean, that's about as simple as it gets to have on-demand hot water with little effort. You know, before we would have a stock pot, grab our rainwater or melt our snow, heat it up on the wood stove, and then take our shower, right? Um, or heat it up on the propane stove. Um, having the hot water heater, um, it's about 200 bucks for that one that has the flue on top. And yeah, it's going to save a lot of time, a lot of effort. It'll, it'll just be on demand right now. So we no longer have to heat up our water on the wood stove or our propane stove when we want hot water. So all you need is a pump, that water heater, run some water lines, however you want. That's it. About as simple as it gets. Um, I do have about a day's work in that mechanical room. You know, now that I have that water heater, I need to vent that. And then I'm going to reconnoiter our solar batteries and just kind of consolidate everything, get everything really buttoned up. So it's a lot more neat in there. You know, I got to strap those lines and everything. So it's not just a rat's nest, but, um, I was just eager to get it hooked up and test it out. And yeah, we have on demand water. So pretty sweet. Other than that, the garden's been going pretty well. Everything's still alive. We've been keeping it watered. Um, I'll probably run a hose to our uh, rain barrel that, that's over there. Well, I have one on the other side too, but um, I might build a little box here to have a battery. That way we can just pump. I can go over and just turn the nozzle and then pump water from the rain barrel over here with that transfer pump. And then we can just spray rather than having to walk back and forth with the canister all the time, you know, cause that's about 10 trips to get this thing watered. So it's not very productive. In the past few days, I've been creating our yard towards the chicken coop. So you can see how much different this looks. A lot more thinned out. This used to look like this. You know, you couldn't even walk. You couldn't even see the chicken coop, but now you can see it really good. Again, we removed all the popples. So all that's left is maple and birch and then the pines. Because I want to keep the pines. And I do have these to transplant still too. So I'll strategically lay these out. And just, uh, yeah, we're not trying to have a yard yard, but... It's just nice to be able to move around in here. You know, I've been raking up all the sticks and then I'm just gonna keep this mowed now. And by next year, this should be a decent little lawn. Now today's mission is I got this wall tent kind of half set up. I gotta tie it down, but um, our tiny house that we stayed in while we were building our cabin. I'm gonna disassemble this because right now it's just a, it's just a storage shed, that's all it is. So. Um, I'm gonna take the stuff from in here, put it inside this tent until I build a better shed. But then these materials I'm gonna utilize. So this metal I'm gonna put on my log cabin workshop. That way that has a more permanent roof other than that tarp. And then the windows I'm gonna use on the new cabin build. And uh, this thing's fully insulated with foam board. So that foam board I can use in the new cabin build. And then the rest of it will just be trash. But um, I'll utilize what I can off of it, but it'll be nice to get this thing disassembled. And then I'll have a trailer to haul materials with. So it's going to be a win-win. And like I said, eventually, maybe this fall, I'll build a permanent shed here to, to store stuff in. So anyways, that's what I got going on around here. This upcoming week, I'm starting the new cabin build. So stay tuned for that. As always, I appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you soon.